Sunlight and Showers by Susanna Loper and Ashley Chase, read by Miss Tuxhorn. Sunlight and Showers. We don't often think about how amazing it is to be able to turn on the faucet and get clean water. It's great to be able to take a hot shower whenever you want. It's great to be able to flip a switch and have a light turn on. For many people in the world, it is much harder to get clean water, electrical energy, and hot showers. Ashok Gagil is an engineer who has spent many years figuring out ways to make it easier. Professor Gagil grew up in India, and now he lives in the United States. He believes in using science to solve problems. For example, Professor Gagil knew that people sometimes get sick from drinking water with germs in it. He designed a small, simple machine to help people clean water so it is safe to drink. The machine uses light energy to kill germs in the water. It is much cheaper than many other solutions for making water safe to drink. Professor Gadgill holds a glass of water that was cleaned by his machine. Professor Gill wanted to encourage more engineers to solve problems to help others. He started teaching a class for students who are training to become engineers. In the class, students designed ways to solve real problems in the world. The students worked in teams and got to choose a problem to, sol to try to solve. One team of students chose to work with people in Guatemala who did not have a way to get hot water easily. Guatemala is in Central America. So here's the United States, and below the United States is Mexico, and below Mexico is Central America, and Guatemala is the yellow country in Central America. Guatemala is a country in Central America, often called the land of eternal spring. Guatemala is home to many different kinds of environments, from rich rainforests to marshes to grassy plains and ocean shores. The culture is also very diverse. In addition to Spanish, the people of Guatemala communicate in more than 26 different languages. In Guatemala, some houses do not have water heaters. The people who live in these houses also use cold water to bathe and to wash clothes and dishes. The team of students wanted to design a water heater that could meet the needs of these households. To figure out the best design, they would, work, they would need to work with the people in Guatemala. The water heater would use light energy from the sun or solar energy. How would the heater work? Sunlight makes things warmer. You can feel this happening yourself. If you sit outside on a sunny day, the sunlight will make you feel warmer. The students called themselves the Solar Water Heater Team. Things become warmer in sunlight because the light energy is converted into thermal energy. The team's design would use this energy conversion. A solar water heater converts light energy into thermal energy to make water hot. Light energy will make this wet laundry warmer and help it to dry more quickly. The light energy is converted into thermal energy. The first thing the team did was investigate or learn about the problem they wanted to solve. Some of the students went to Guatemala to learn from the people there and better understand their needs for hot water. The students talked to lots of Guatemalan people. They found out how much hot water people needed and what they would use it for. They asked people what time of day they would use the hot water. They asked to see people's houses and talked with them about where to put a water heater so that that would be safe and easy to get to. They wanted to build the water heaters in Guatemala, so they found out what kinds of building materials are available there. They wanted to make sure Guatemalan people could actually find the solution useful. A student named Meg talked with the people in Guatemala to learn about their needs for hot water. 
The students went back to the U.S. and shared what they had learned from the people in Guatemala with the rest of their team. The team thought about the needs of the people they had talked to. They thought about how, the de how to design a water heater that would meet the those needs. There are several criteria that their water heater would need to address. The water heater needed to heat 100 liters, about 25 gallons of water, to a temperature of 40 degrees Celsius, 104 degrees Fahrenheit. The water heater needed to be easy to build with the materials that could be found in Guatemala. It also needed to be cheap to build and to put in people's homes. It had to work without costing extra money for families who were using it. It had to last a long time without breaking down. The team thought about all of these criteria as they planned their water heater. The team planned how to build the water heaters. The team investigated lots of different materials for building the water heaters. They wanted to find out which materials would keep the water hot by holding in the most thermal energy. After gathering all of this information, the students made a plan and began to build different water heaters. To test materials, they built water heaters out of each kind of material. Then they put the water heaters in the sunlight. They measured how hot the water got and how long the water stayed hot. They tested heaters made of wood, cement, foam, metal, and other materials. Then they synthesized everything they had learned, putting it all together to decide which materials would make the best solar water heater. Merwin and Adam helped test two different kinds of water heaters. The team did lots of tests. Wood was one of the first materials the students tested. It would have been easy to build the frame of the heater out of wood. The wood didn't cost very much. However, the students talked to the people in Guatemala and learned that wood is not the best material for building there. Even though it is sunny most of the time, there are lots of heavy rainstorms in Guatemala, so the wood would often get wet. After a while, wet wood becomes rotten and falls apart. Wood was cheap, but it wouldn't last long. The team had to think about trade-offs such as this as they were testing different materials. They thought about how much materials cost, how easy they were to get in Guatemala, and how well they worked. Sarah cut wood for the frame of one of the heater designs they tested. After synthesizing what they had learned from all their tests, the team decided to build the heaters out of metal. Here's how the heater design works. The water is in the, a plastic bag inside the heater. On top of the plastic bag is a sheet of metal painted black, and on top of that is a sheet of glass. Glass lets a lot of light energy pass through it, but it keeps in thermal energy. The sunlight goes through the glass and hits the, the sheet of black metal. The sheet of black metal absorbs the light. The metal is painted black because dark things absorb a lot of light. When the light energy is absor absorbed, it is converted into thermal energy and the metal gets hot. The water underneath the metal sheet gets hot too. Foam around the back of water helps hold in thermal energy to keep the water hot. The metal, plastic, foam, and glass are all cheap materials that are easy to find in Guatemala. This design met the criteria of being simple and easy to build. Solar water heater. Here's the black metal, the glass, the plastic bag with water inside, foam to hold in the thermal energy, pipes let out hot water out of the heater, and the pipe lets water, cold water into the heater. So cold water comes in, hot water goes out. The heater is attached to the roof of a house. There are two reasons for this. First, the roof is outside in the sunlight. Second, 
If the heater is on the roof, the hot water can flow down into the shower. To take a hot shower, you turn on a faucet attached to a pipe that lets water into the bottom of the water heater. The hot water at the top of the water heater is pushed out and comes down another pipe to the shower. The new water that was let into the bottom of the water heater now gets heated for the next shower. If we look at our solar shower diagram, cold water comes in pipe from holding tank. Pipe that lets cold water into heater is right here. Here's the faucet. We have our solar water heater that we saw over here. Light energy from the sun comes and heats it up. We have the roof that it sits on, and then we have the pipe that lets hot water out of the heater, and then we have hot shower. The team tested their solar water heater many times at their lab in the U.S. Each time, they measured the temperature of the water to see how long it took to get hot in the sunlight and how long it stayed hot after the sun had gone down. Once the data showed that their design would meet the criteria, they were ready to try it out in Guatemala. When they returned to Guatemala, the team tested their design again before trying it in people's houses. Members of the team went to Guatemala again. They used their design to build solar water heaters with the materials they could find in Guatemala. They worked together with families to set up the water heaters on the roofs of the families' houses. The families tested the water heaters and found that they worked. The next step would be for Guatemalan people to make more water heaters so many more local families could buy them. This family worked together with the team to set up their new water heater. It took a whole team of engineers working with many people in the community to design the solar water heater. One team member, Sarah, said, I don't think it would be possible to do this on my own. Everyone on the team was an expert on something different. Some knew about designing things, some knew about energy, some knew about different kinds of materials. Because the team members knew about different topics, they were able to think about their design in different ways. They also learned a lot from talking to the people in Guatemala. Working together, they figured out how to solve their problem. The students say Professor Gilgad's class is one of their favorite classes. Professor Gilgad is proud that his students are learning how to solve real problems for real people. And the families in Guatemala have a solution that helps them get hot water. One team member, Alyssa, said that using science to solve a problem in people's lives was the best feeling in the world. On page 20, we have the glossary. I'm going to read a few of these words that might be new. Absorb, to take in and hold something. Criteria, the things that engineers think about and test in order to know how well something s solves a problem. Design. There's two kinds of design. There's a verb, so this is the action, to try and make something new that solves a problem. And then there's a noun, that's a thing. A design can be something new made to solve a problem. So it's either an action or a thing. We know electrical energy, energy engineer, Investigate is to learn more about something. We know that light energy is a form of energy that we can see. Materials are the stuff that makes up everything. To measure is to use a tool to find out information such as how heavy, how big, how fast, or how hot or cold something is. Solar energy is light energy from the sun. It's a word that we use a lot, synthesize, to put together multiple pieces of information in order to understand something. Test is to try something and find out what happens. We know thermal energy. And a trade-off is when you have to give up one thing in return for another one.